things that's most common about the work that I do with these groups is that they always want to have a lot of meetings. Do you have a lot of meetings? Yeah, a lot of meetings, a lot of meetings. One of the things that's most interesting as I work with these groups and their meetings is very often they want to list all of their problems. We'll go into a meeting, we'll put up a whiteboard or on, a, on an easel pad, and they'll want to list all the things that are very wrong with their organization. And I sometimes encourage them to think about what things are they really doing well? What are their core competencies? What are the things that they have natural talent and abilities to do? So I come from a very small rural town in Pennsylvania, but I get an opportunity to travel to a lot of metropolitan areas and not very far from Manhattan, get to travel into Manhattan. But in the rural Pennsylvania where I live, my neighbor has a longhorn steer. A longhorn steer. And these meetings sometimes remind me of that steer. A point here, a point there, and a whole lot of bull in between. <laughs> right? new connections, new relationships, is how does body language play a role in that? Not about lying or telling the truth, but how does body language play a role? And back in the late 1960s, a gentleman named Albert Moravian decided he wanted to know more about our communication process and more about how body language and other factors played a role. And I know a lot of you, I'm sure, are very well educated, and you've probably uh, done research in your uh, education. Maybe some of you do research today. And of course, with a research study, we always have some research questions. We may have a hypothesis. We may, if we're working with people, we may have a population. We pull a sample out of that population. We may have some limitations to the study. Albert's study had all of those things. And some 50 years ago, give or take a little bit, but he published that study. Since that time, people have tried to shoot a lot of holes in Albert's work. But it's really stood the test of time. And if it would interest you, if you would uh, Google uh, Albert Raymond, you'd find out a whole lot about him. But what I want to mention is the results of his study. He wanted to know what made people likable in their communication process. Not in a romantic way, but in a, you know, a cordial, casual, interfacing with each other, building connections kind of way. His results said, said that 55% of our communication process has to do with body language. 55%. It's a very commonly quoted uh, statistic from his study, 55%. And then another 38% of that communication process is the tone, the tone that we use. So we have 55 and 38. I didn't do very well in math class. The girl that sat next to me ate paste. I couldn't cheat off her work. But 55 and 38 is about what? About 93. Yeah, somebody else was in class with me. Yeah, yeah. So about 93%, right? That's big. So my time with you is coming to an end. I'm really excited about the opportunity that's in front of you to build more connections. Not only with the Wyden Hammer staff that's here, but with each other. And when you leave this conference and you go back to the places that you came from, you have even more opportunity to continue to build new connections. 
Most people believe, popular wisdom suggests, that a lot of our success comes from the relationships 